Hello and welcome to this DCS video. This video is in two parts. The first part is a tag view uh, a file, an ACMI file, and it's just showing the pattern used in a low visibility approach. The second part is the video of the track, and we can see the instrumentation. So we can see it's just a normal pattern, close in pattern. I've taken about seven, six or seven miles downwind of the threshold before turning in and given the condition the visibility I actually went off the track a little bit so after turning in I was left with a bit of offset so I run my heading is 90 so I offset to about 120 and then intercepted the ILS and glide slope Okay, the startup is a little, a little quicker than a normal startup because we're not using all the instrumentation. We will need the EGI. However, we don't need the CQ and the IPSI. As all our cockpit work is going to be done from within the instruments in the cockpit. We're just tuning into Sanaki. I wouldn't normally voice over. I wouldn't normally voice over the videos, however, in this occasion I found it required my full concentration in order to make the landing using load visibility, so I decided I'd add some comments at the end. Please also note that the the track IR, I use a pause button to pause it when I'm accessing the instruments. It makes it easier to stabilize on them. However, once in flight, uh, particularly during this flight, uh, there was no pause used. So you might see that the position looks very static, but that's only because uh, I was focused on the instruments. switching on ILS and TAC on there on the navigation panel. I'll wait until the startup is, is done. Did it okay, I'm tuning in the ILS and the TAC on. We're going to have a little bit of beeping. That's to do with a bug surrounding the ILS audible tone. So 31X and 108.9 are good for Sanaki, ILS and, and TCN.
I'll roll out, rolling out and just talk a little bit about the instruments. Uh, the instruments we're going to be uh, using here are the the ADI for controlled flight, uh, the altimeter, the vertical velocity indicator, which is to the right of the ADI, to the right and upper, and the speed indicator on the left and most important the HSI just behind the stick. Okay, the, in the arrow with the big head on it, which is pointing to the 9 o'clock position on the HSI, is called the course arrow. And it's in two parts. There's the two ends of it, and then there's a section in the centre which moves from left to right. And that centre piece is called the course deviation indicator. You can see I'm just lining it up, so that the direction of that is facing the direction of the runway fairly accurately. And I've also trimmed out our altitude because we're going to be staying in the vicinity of Sanaki and because of the low visibility conditions I know that the altimeter is going to give me a good reading on my threshold. It's important to know that to the north of Sanaki there's some high ground about three or four miles away so we may intercept that so we need to be at about 2,000 feet. So we can see at the moment we're heading on a track for 090 and we can see there's a needle on the outside it's called the bearing point needle one and that's actually tracking our TACAM position you can see it's just flipped over and it's now behind us because we were very close to it on the runway and it's now directly behind us it little it will be a little bit offset from the direction of the runway because it's not on the runway it's actually on a probably on a bit of grass So you can see I'm turning out. And I'm turning out until our course arrow is upside down. And once it's upside down, it means that we're traveling in the opposite direction to the direction we came out from the runway. Although we'll be offset a little bit from it. And the offset is indicated by the course deviation needle, which will be in the direction of the navigation point which is the TACAN. So we maintain that that course by making sure that needle is at our 12 o'clock position upside down. And if we watch on the outside of the HSI you can see there's two needles and the one we're interested in is needle one because that currently is following our TACAN uh, channel. And when that moves to the 9 o'clock position, we know that we're exactly adjacent to the runway. And under normal conditions, we could look out our left window and see the runway beside us. It also gives a good indication of how far we are away from the runway. You can see coming up now, it's about 2 miles. So, so our, our bank out turn brought us about 2 miles to the north of the runway. So we're going to continue on this course.
I find practicing without uh, the use of the HUD sometimes gives a real understanding, a strong understanding of the instruments and in many situations now I'm starting to look at the instruments within the pit rather than looking at the HUD because the HUD is not always visible depending on your seat position and particularly with track IR with six degrees of freedom activated. I've lost a bit of altitude and I've also drifted off a little bit. Okay, so you can see I've set up for for approach by dropping gear and flaps well before I started into the turn. This gives us some chance of control on the aircraft when it comes to finding the localizer and the glide slope and tracking them. We'll have the aircraft in a relatively well trimmed position. Okay, I've rolled out and you can see we're approximately uh, four or five miles from four miles from the runway and we've already picked up the glide slope so we're starting to track down the glide slope at less than 100 feet per minute speed is down to 160 knots and our altitude is dropping we're also still tracking away from the, the Takan station in order to pick up the localizer and you will see the bearing point indicator and the yellow bar will start to track in there it goes now and I need to track on very very quickly back to put my course needle my course arrow in the 12 o'clock position again so I must have the two of those coincidental the vertical yellow bar in the ADI which represents our position left or right of the localizer and the course deviation indicator which indicates our position left or right of the TACAN so now I've gone a little bit high in altitude in these conditions probably a bit better probably better to be a little bit high than low and I'm going to start tracking down to try and bring that bar up while maintaining the localizer in the center of the ADI you can see the ground is starting to appear on the left and right now I see the lights and that's a good approach So that concludes this video and thank you for watching.